But God is love. And these are the weapons in which he uses. It's just his character. It's just himself. And we have gone about presenting him in such a way that isn't love. We've tried to force Christianity on people. We've used it brutally. We've, we've even become the term, uh, um, the, the Bible browbeaters. What was it? What was the, yeah, one of those things. We beat people over the head with it. We hoard it over people. That's not how love works. We weaponize love. I was watching a little skit, funny skit my son sent me. He said, is this what marriage is like? And the skit was the guy sitting on the couch, and the wife came in and says, we need to talk. (laughs) Yes, you always know that's bad. That's always bad. She knows. That's always bad. We need to talk. I can't do this anymore. And he's like, what? What's going on? He's like, the the mess and the the, the, the laundry. And he's like, she's fussing about all these things, the the dishes that piled up high. I can't do this anymore. And he's like, baby, come with me. I want to show you something. And she says, what? What is it? He says, come here. I want to show you something. He walks over to the laundry room. And he's like, look, it happened again. She's like, what? He's like, I just put all my laundry in here, and the next day it's folded in on my bed. I don't know how it happens, but it's, it's magic. And she looks at him and goes, are you serious? <laughs> and he goes, no, there's more. And he, he goes to the coffee table in the kitchen, in the living room, and he says, I don't know. Every night I just leave my dishes here, and the next day they're washed and put away. He's like, sometimes I just pile it high just to see how far I can take it. <laughs> And the next day, they're just washed and put away. And she looks at him and goes, you have got to be kidding me. Because one of the things that love doesn't do is be boastful and parade itself. And we have forgotten one of the greatest weapons is just to love somebody, just to do for them. Now, fellas, I'm not giving you license to drive your women nuts. I'm not. I have three little children, and trust me, They drive me nuts. If you should see the back of my car right now, and I just made them clean it, and already it looks like two pigs and a a, a raccoon have been back there. (laughs) But it's amazing. When you love somebody, you just do for them. The greatest depiction of love between a man and a woman that I've ever seen was what my father used to do for my mother. My mother was a Stanford graduate, law school. My father was a street thug turned Navy man. How they got together, I don't know. I could have been the son of a doctor or something, but, you know, I'm proud of my dad. My mom loved the opera. She was cultured. My dad loved the temptations and the four tops, okay? But my dad, every year, would get pamphlets about what opera was coming into town and buy tickets and take her to shows. To this day, and I have never told her, and Mama, I hope you don't see this recording, but she, my dad hated the opera. And I'm sure he knew, she knew, but he he hated it. But he would learn about the guys in it. He would learn about the singers. He would learn about the history of it. And he would talk to her about it for days before they'd go. And then he'd get dressed up and he'd go. And he'd come home and she'd be so happy. And, oh, we went to the opera. It was so special. And then he would go to the den. I'd be like, Dad, how was it? He was like, Lord, help me. I have a headache. (laughs) I have a headache. I don't know one word they said, son. But your mama loved it. And that was what I grew up with as you just do. You don't parade it around. He never hoarded, well, I take you to the opera and you don't take me any. He never did that. You just take care of someone. I would come home from a long day of playing basketball, and this is probably has ruined me, Mama. Thank you. I love it. But I'd come home from a long day of playing basketball. We used to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and do our chores. You get everything done by 8, you get breakfast, the day was yours. And I'd come home from a long day of playing at this park, that park, all over the city, And I'd come home, and I'd be limping in the door. I'd be tired, covered in sweat. My mom would say, go hit the showers. 
And I'd go take a shower and get changed, and I'd sit down, and she would come out with a bucket of water and soak my feet and massage my feet. My mother would do this. She never thought it was a chore. She was just helping her boy. This is the depiction of love. She never hoarded it over me. Why don't you take the trash out? Next time I'm not massaging your feet. And I got 18s, right? I don't know if you know this, but those are big toes. But she would do this for me. Love is different. And it's a different kind of weapon. In my eyes, that woman can do no wrong because she loved me. Was there wrong? Absolutely. But in my eyes, that's St. Beverly Harris because of love. So when she introduced me to Jesus, I went wholeheartedly. Because if Jesus taught you how to love, then I want to meet him. Because you've shown me love. We have to understand that our weapons are different. Pastor Greg talked this morning about what the war in heaven, we have turned it into pictures and images of swords and fighting. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says there was no place found for Satan and his angels in heaven anymore. The man, the man, the thing didn't want to love anymore. So there's no place for you here. You don't want to abide by dad's rules. You don't want to love. You got to go. There's no place found for you here anymore because God has chosen to run his kingdom based on love. Even his throne is not called the judgment seat. It's called the mercy seat because love overrides the law and fulfills it at the same time. I am so grateful he does not take the law and break it over my head. But he dispenses it with love, even paying the price for me because he loves. So then why do we turn as followers of the Most High God and weaponize in the opposite way his love? We forget our place. We love what he's done for us, but we want to hoard it to ourselves. We are the most, oh, this is going to hurt. We are the most ancestral people because we want to hoard all the love for us and treat everybody else like they're something that can't be loved. Do you forget where you were when God found you? I remember where I was. Awatuki, hailstorm, middle of the night. Giving God the double bird, you're number one and not the right finger. I remember where I was when he came and got me out of the gutter. I had lost everything. I remember what it was when I walked into God's house and someone in this room reminded me that I was a child of God. And to go and act like his child. We forget the love that was bestowed upon us that is bestowed upon us every single morning when we open our eyes. My alarm is great, but it is not what wakes me up. There is a love that beckons me every morning. Get up, son. Time to wake up. Let's go at it again. So let's go keep going through 1 Corinthians 13 because this is one of the most important chapters that I have ever read. And let's walk through it one more time. Remember, first verses 1 and 2 talked about if you have all of the spiritual gifts but don't have love, you have nothing. There is, spiritual gifts are great, and they're wonderful, and they're important. But without love, you're missing the boat. Pastor Gary talked about it this morning. When you have your debt paid, is that not a good thing? Your sin debt has been paid. That's a great thing, but you have not reconnected with life. His death paid the price for our sins, but his life is what we need to connect with. You can be a sinless, lost person because you never connected with life. Your debt's been paid. You don't go to hell. Yay. But what about life? 
Have you reconnected with life? I know some wonderful people, some kind people. The old lady on the corner in my neighborhood is just as sweet as can be. Treats my kids well. We often talk about the knuckleheads that live across the way that fly all types of flags and boast all types of wild things. I don't think the HOA is going to tolerate them much more. We, I'm trying desperately to introduce her to Jesus, or she's going to be lost as the sweetest lady in my neighborhood because she refuses to acknowledge Jesus. The thief on the cross didn't have time to know the Ten Commandments, didn't have time to study the the, the stats, the 27, 28 fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventists. He didn't have time to honor the Sabbath, but he did have time to acknowledge Jesus. And Jesus said, you'll be with me in heaven. Love. If you don't have love, you've lost. You've missed the point. You've missed the boat. So let's go through it. 1 Corinthians 13, love is superior to all spiritual gifts in and of themselves. The spiritual gifts are great. Prophecy, knowledge, faith, speaking in tongues, all those things are great. But without love, you have missed, missed it completely. And then we skipped over this yesterday because I wanted to make a point about kindness and long-suffering. But 1 Corinthians 13, 3, the most dramatic renunciations of self are in the same way profitless without love. If you bestow all of my goods to feed the poor and I give my body to be, per- to be burned, it still profits me nothing without love. It's nothing. People have done things to puff themselves up all the time. Look at me, look at me. They didn't do it for love, they did it for self. They did it for self. 1 Corinthians 13, 4, part A. The things that love is. If you're going to be a Christian, if you're going to profess God, if you're going to dwell in him and he in you, you have to be long-suffering and kind. You have to be patient with people. You have to endure. You have to have the strength and courage. How many times in the Bible he says, be strong and of good courage? He says it over and over again. I told you a couple days ago that he's the only one that has the words. When he, when he speaks it, the power to do it comes with it. Be strong and of good courage. You are going to have to endure. You watch children go in and get their vaccinations. Sometimes they got to get four or five of them. Oh, it hurts. It hurts me to watch. As that baby looks at you and says, they're hurting me and you're not stopping it. But I remember when my son, at five, I was telling him, hey, son, you got to be tough today. You got to get some shots today. All right, no crying. He said, I can do it, daddy. I can do it. And he, when, he, when, he, when he went to go give him shots in the shoulder, he did like this. <laughs> He's flexing, Right? And they gave him his shots in the shoulder, and he looked at me. He was, and they got done. And I said, that's it, Bubs, that's it. He said, I did it, right? Took him to go get some ice cream. Got him an ice pack later. He cried later, but it's fine. (laughs) He was strong. He was courageous. He endured. But 1 Corinthians 13 Chapter, four, chapter 13, verse 4, part B, gives you eight things that love isn't. And you had better know what love is not. Love is not envious. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. Ooh, love does not behave rudely. Love does not seek its own. It is not provoked. It thinks no evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity. It rejoices in faith. Envy is one of the least productive and most damaging of all sins. It accomplishes absolutely nothing except to hurt. There's nothing that envy accomplishes. 
Love keeps its distance from envy and does not resent it when someone else is promoted or blessed. I can't get you mad because God is, Adriana's got a husband. I'm a preacher. I ain't got nothing, God. Am I supposed to be envious and jealous and mad because Ray found Adriana and Adriana found Ray? Am I supposed to be upset? Or do I say, God bless them in every way possible? I'm so happy for them. I'm so overjoyed for their love. I'm so overjoyed for those kids, their unity. I'm so blessed to see that love is still possible. What, do I, what am I supposed to do? Love does not parade itself. We just talked about it. Love works anonymously. In a relationship, you do things for your loved one because they're your loved one. You just do it. How many times have, and I don't know if this happens to you, I'm kind of an Amazon junkie, so I order a lot. Sometimes things get delivered to my house that don't belong to me. Out of love and not curiosity, <laughs> I go find the house that belonged to and bring it to their door, knock and ring the doorbell. I've seen other people. I get ring notices all the time. They stole my packages. It's not love. Especially when you know it doesn't belong to you. Let me show you love. I was standing in line waiting to get into a venue. And the guy in front of me dropped his cash on the ground. Those were several hundred dollar bills. I'm broke. Did God just bless me? <laughs> now, it would be very easy to take this size 18 and step on it and just. Doo -doo 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 but here's what happened. Two people behind me saw the money drop. And they hurried past me to step on it. And I took my left arm and said, don't do that. I took my right arm and said, don't do that. And I gently nudged them, gently, gently, <laughs> nudged them out of the way and reached down and picked up the money. But when I started reaching down, my head hit the guy in the back and he turned around. I said, sir, you dropped this. He was as intoxicated as it could be. He, who are you? <laughs> I got that money. Stuck it in his pocket. Now as we're going into the football game, I got to watch him to his seat. Because the people behind me might jack him. They might follow him to the bathroom. So I anonymously just watched and walked to his seat. And when he got to his seat, I went to my seat. He has no idea. But I know what God has done for me. And I didn't want anybody to hurt him. And I've seen those situations. Love does things anonymously. You just do it because you love. Love does not behave rudely. Where there is love, there will be kindness and good manners. Kindness and good manners. It amazes me how many people in this day and age don't like when you say, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. I don't know any other way. I was the son of a military man. Everything was a sir on the end of his name. And you treat your mother with the respect of saying, yes, ma'am. Yes, mom. I hear you. I'm coming. Let me come to you. You never made your mom come to you. When your mom came home with the groceries, you better get your tail up and go bring those groceries in the house. She just went and got them. You want to eat today? You go help. You get up and you do the laundry. You do everything they ask of you because of love. You don't sit there and, 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 and act rudely. You don't say what to your parents. That's impossible. You can't do that. And I see it today. I see kids behaving rudely and parents allowing it. We have grown into a culture where that kind of behavior is becoming the norm. We are the salt. We resist the decay. 
Love does not seek its own. Romans 12.10, in honor giving preference to one another. In honor giving preference to one another. In honor giving preference to one another. I know without a shadow of a doubt why God sent me to the Glendale Church. It was to save my life. He sent me to Gary Vinden. I've heard people say things like, why are you at that church? Well, let me ask you a question. Why didn't God send me to your church? I know why God sent me to him. He taught me the gospel in relationship better than anybody ever has. I know when I went into the staff that I was around praying people. Do you realize that in staff meeting, we used to pray for two hours? I used to leave staff meeting, get there at 8 o'clock, leave at 12 going, man, these people pray long. (laughs) But I go back because they prayed. And when I was coming back to God, I needed him. And they prayed. And they prayed. And they brought up name after name and situation after situation. And we prayed, and then sometimes we'd be praying so long, we'd only have the last 45 minutes to conduct church business because Pastor Gary's not going to miss lunch. He's not going to do that. (laughs) We'd have the last 45 minutes, and we'd conduct all the church business, and then we'd go forward. This is what God did, I know. So, yes, every time that I can, I acknowledge the fact This man was part of the process to save my life. And our church was part of the process that saved my life because I was a knucklehead coming in off the street. I had rejected God every way possible, and I knew he was real. But love conquered this beat-up, broken heart. Love is not provoked My goodness, we have such a sensitive world right now. And everybody assumes the worst. Everybody assumes the worst. One of the things I was taught about relationships is when you're in a relationship with somebody, don't assume that everything they do is to annoy you, bother you, offend you. Assume they come from a good place until proven otherwise. It makes life go so much easier if you assume someone has a good heart and they just made a mistake. I have to assume that you don't know how bad that hurt. You don't know what that felt like. You don't know my story. You don't know my history. (coughs) So you don't know that that bothered me. But I'm not going to assume you did it on purpose. I'm tougher than that. Stop being so sensitive and assuming everybody's out to get you. Not everybody's out to get you. There are some. Ray, I'm out to get you, Ray. I'm out to get you. There are some. But goodness gracious, is not our lives guided by the Father? Even if you are out to get me, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. What the enemy meant for evil, God will work it out for my good. I pray that you're out to get me. I need more blessings. Ring it. I need more. I love when they call me crazy and say I'm just a Bible banger. And I've got teammates who... Eddie, you go do your Jesus stuff. We're going to go to the club tonight. Let me ask you something. What's sadder, me serving God or you going to the club at 45? (laughs) What's sadder? What's sadder? We have to make sure that we're not constantly assuming the worst because that's a tool of the enemy. That is not a weapon of God. God said, While you were my enemy, you were, not you were thinking about it, you were my enemy. I reconciled you into myself. I fixed things between us while you did hate me. I'm not going to assume that everything you do is to offend me. God comes, and this is someone who knows the heart, and God still comes after every single one of us despite our ugly, nasty hearts. And he's still willing to trade that thing out and give you a new one. You're going to take my filth? God, you're, you're pulling something out of me in places I can't even scrub. Pink stuff don't get back there. But you're going to pull it out and give me a new one? Yes. 
and this new one's going to be perfect and uncorrupted. All I ask them to do is that you feed it. Feed it. Love thinks no evil. It literally means love does not store up the memory of any wrong it has received. Oh, man, that's a big one. I can learn from what was done. I can learn from mistakes of the past, but I do not look at you and say, you did this to me, and I'm never going to forgive you for it. What anti-God doctrine is that? Never? You'll eat those words, I promise. You'll eat that. It doesn't mean that I let you harm me again. That's not what it means. It doesn't mean I let you put me in that position again. It just means that I recognize that you are such a broken mess just like me. And your past is hurt just like me. And you're, you come from mess just like me. When I preached this sermon at the Glendale Church, it bothered some people. But I'm going to say it here again because bothering you is what I do. <laughs> I want you to understand that slavery was nasty business. But the slave and the slave master were both slaves to the devil. Both of them were enslaved. Now, I don't equate the two, but what I'm telling you is we were all bound. This country was bound under the yoke of an enemy who is a tyrant who wanted nothing to do but hurt us. And he was puppeteering us. And we're still dealing with it today. The heart of the country is still broken. And we want it to be better. But we're not out there showing love. It has to start in our church. It has to be unity amongst us. We have to break down the barriers amongst each other. And we haven't done that yet. And we wonder why our country is broken. They don't have the answers. We do. They don't have the weapons. We do. It's love. And love is going to do it the long way. So when it's complete, everybody will be on board looking back going, what a mess that was. I'm glad we are where we are now. One of my favorite things to do, and poor Elder, he's, he's losing his mind, but I used to every year talk to Sister Jackson and her husband. They got married in the 50s. They met in the 40s when this was highly irregular for a six foot seven black man to be dating a four foot 11 white woman. I love hearing their stories. And they survived to this day. They've been through it all. They've watched our country through it all. And their love won the day. Love does it the long way. The long way. Go down to verse 7. 1 Corinthians 13, 7. Love is strong, believing, hopeful, and enduring. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures some things. Is that what it says? All things. You are called to a mission of endurance. God does not raise cookie cutter, puppet, weak Christians. If you're going to be a follower of Christ, you have to understand who your creator is. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. You are going to have to learn how to stand up and be accounted for. You are going to have to fight. You are going to have to stand up and endure. You're going to have to be tough. You're going to have to be strong. The great news about it is he's already given you all of the strength and endurance just in his word. He's given it to you. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong, be very strong and very courageous. He's already given it. This is the same God who said, let there be light, and every atom popped on. That same God just said, be strong. Every atom in my being has the strength to endure. It doesn't mean that endurance is, e is easy. If any of you played sports, I played with what a guy we used to call the Black Bobby Knight. That man was tough. And he'd run us till we puke. And you'd puke in a trash can or puke in your shirt. 
and get back on the line and run some more. That's why I walk everywhere now. I don't run no more. I've done it all, okay? I've done it. But what I'm telling you is it's amazing what the body can endure when the mind sets itself to do it. That's what he used to always tell me. Coach, I'm dying. You're not even close to death yet, boy. You don't know what death is. Coach, I can't do anymore. That's because you're weak-minded. Tell your mind to tell your body you got another one. And it worked. My body responded to what I set my mind to. So when you set your mind to Jesus, what responds? My body. And the part that doesn't respond, which is normally my thoughts, what does the Bible say about your thoughts? Take your thoughts captive. Literally take them at sword point. I am not defeated. I do have what more in me. You will sit down and be quiet, nasty, evil thoughts. I am not less than nothing. I am more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthened me. Pull your sword out and take your thoughts captive and keep your mind focused on Jesus. You ever try to read your Bible in the middle of the night and the devil throws everything at you? Everything at you. I saw you out early in the morning. I was going to use the facilities and I saw Marilyn out there reading. She was studying something. And I was going to go over and say hi. And I was like, nope, I'm not going to be a distraction today. I'm going to let her study. But you, you, if you've ever taken the time to study anything, you know that every thought, every text message, every phone call, every email pops through. Everything that blings, shines. Everything that you think of, songs that you haven't thought of in 25 years, people that you haven't thought about calling pop into your head. You have to take your thoughts captive because he does not want you to know the words because the power comes with the word. He doesn't want you to know that. He wants you to be out there weaponless in a world at war. We bear all things. We believe all things. The word for bears can also be translated covers. Paul brings an important truth along with 1 Peter 4, 8. Above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will overcome a multitude of sins. My goodness, if you've been a parent for five minutes, you know that your angels aren't angels. They're not. But do you still love them? And I have little ones, nine and seven, in this weekend. I have been told about the teenage years. I'm not ready. The defiance. <laughs> I work with teenagers. I see it. It is a special kind of endurance. It is a special kind of endurance. But love is strong enough to endure and cover a multitude of sins. How else do you think we're going to make it to heaven if love has not covered us? Love hopes in all things. Love has confidence in the future, not pessimism. My goodness, we have not done a good job of telling people about the joy of what is to come. We are so focused on what's happening right now that we have forgotten of the joy that is to come. Do you know, I, I will tell you, having been in a few scrapes in my life, having been, I'll just use the word, jumped, okay? I have seen Friends look at me and go, telling me there's three of us. You know how much bolder you get when you know you got friends? <laughs> oh, it's only three of y'all? Yeah, that's not enough. But I got three friends back there. That's why I'm acting like that, <laughs> right? It's easier to know that when, when, when you have help coming, I know that though I may go through hard times that make me cry and make me weep and leave me broken and I'm stressed out, I still know that joy and help is coming. And no matter what night I go through, I know the dawn has to break. No matter what storm I'm in, I know that sunshine has to come through. It's got to pass. And so sometimes I don't want to act like cows. 
running away from the storm. I want to act like bison. I want to run into the storm. And bison run into the storm because they are trying to get to the center faster to where that storm passes over. Cows endure longer periods of the storm because they keep running away and the storm just follows them. I am strong and courageous. My father told me I am. I will run to the storm. I want it to pass. So if it's one of my favorite sayings, if it's going down, let's get it over with. Let's do it. Let's do it. The best way to understand each of these is to see them in the life of Jesus. We could replace the word love with the name of Jesus, and the description would make perfect sense. Jesus bears all things. Jesus believes all things. Jesus hopes all things, and Jesus definitely endures all things. Jesus will cover you in all of your iniquity. And that is the message. That is the greatest weapon the world needs to hear. How many people have said, I got to get my life together before I come to Jesus? How many people have said, I'm too far gone. I can't come to Jesus. You don't know my Jesus. He endures all and covers all. He hopes for all. And he believes you when you say, I want to change. He will believe you. Go to Jesus. He's got your back. The last part. Well, not the last part. I take that back. 1 Corinthians 13, 8 through 10 talks about the permanency of love. And I'm going to read it to you. Love never fails. Prophecies, they will fail. Talking in tongues, they will cease. Knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. Love will outlive all things. All the gifts. Love will outlive it all. So tell me, then, what's the most important gift? What's the most important thing that I have? It's love. It's the most important tool that I have. It's the most important weapon that I have. It's the most important thing that we can use to defeat the kingdom of hell. It's the most important thing that we can use to knock down the gates and pull people out. It's love. It's not my knowledge. It's not, my, it's not talking in tongues. It's not prophecy. Those things help you, and they're good, but love will win the day. Because love will outlast everything else. What happens when the prophecy passes? What do you got left? You better have love left. You better. You better have been doing it because of love. Because I'm going to say this once again. With God, the means justify the ends. You have to do it the right way or it's not going to work. Is not our country evidence of that. How many people have been turned off of God because of the way somebody brought it to them? The means justify the end. We were just talking earlier today. Fantastic story. Young man made it to AAA baseball. Said he was going to give it a few years. And then he was going to, if he didn't make it to the big leagues, he was going to quit. He's one step away. Five years goes by. He doesn't make it. He winds up having a leg injury, right? What, what happened to him? Oh, did I mix up two stories? All right. Well, I'm going to go because it sounded good. <laughs> it, it sounded good the way I said it. It sounded good. Okay. It sounds good the way I said it. It sounds good. Okay. I'm going to call it pastoral privilege. We got it? Okay. He had his leg cut off in a car accident. Okay? So he goes home. With an injured leg, he can't play baseball anymore. And he goes to church, Adventist young man. And some glorious saint said, the reason that you got your leg cut off in an accident is because you would not play on the Sabbath. How about, it's good to see you, welcome home. How about we just keep our mouth closed and you let God deal with this child? 
how about you let Jesus become important to them again so Sabbath will become important to them? How about you just let God work through you and not beat them over the head with whatever issue you have? Because that's what it is. It's your issue. I would, if it wasn't for love, people, I would have left a long time ago. I've had people tell me that gospel music isn't real music. I was dumbfounded. <laughs> Are you going to deny my entire culture's legacy with the Lord? How about you just enjoy the music you like? And I'll enjoy the music that God has brought me to. Because my story is different than yours. And we just praise God together. How about that? We have to remember that love is the tool to win the war. And we have to, we have to start waging war against the gates of hell. The Bible says that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. That has been taken to mean that we are sitting back and the gates are attacking us and we're going to hold strong. That is not what that means. That means that we are marching to the gates of hell and knocking down walls and causing the devil a migraine headache every time we wake up. Every time we enter into consciousness, he goes, please, Lord, not again. I want him to be so angry at me that he starts praying. Please, Lord, tell Eddie, leave me alone. Please, Lord. I want to cause him as much grief as he's caused me. I want to go to war, but the weapon is love. It's love. It's long suffering. It's having people tell me they hate me and then praying for them. Sometimes in front of them. Sometimes without them. It's writing their name down in my prayer book and never forgetting. It's asking God, to when they make the choice to serve you, God, because I'm trusting that you will woo them to you. When they come to full knowledge of you and your love, can you remind them that we've got a meeting at the Tree of Life, the first Sabbath in heaven? I like to meet him and walk in the sanctuary together. I pray that a lot. I got a big group that I'm expecting to meet at the tree. I got a big group. Because I want to meet them at the tree of life and walk into those gates together and walk into that sanctuary together, singing that brand new song together. Because I'm going to be so happy we made it. Love has changed my life. And there was a time I did not think it strong enough. But God showed me the permanency of love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13, and then we'll be done. And now abide faith, hope, and love, these three. But the greatest is love. It's the greatest. The other two are great. They're wonderful. They're good. But they're good like this. The disciples called Jesus good master, and he said, why do you call me good? Was Jesus good? Absolutely. Absolutely. But he said, there's only one good, that's the Father in heaven. The, other, the others are great, they're good, but in comparison to love, love is the weapon. It's kind of like having the cheat code to win the game. Love is the tool. You're not going to beat it. You're not going to conquer it. And all love has to do is endure to the end. And love will rule the day. But we have to accept, number one, accept love in order for us to give it. And some of us have a hard time accepting love. So this is where we begin to pray. 
Lord, teach me how to be loved so that I can love. We got to learn how to be loved so that we can love. Because once God has done for you what no one else could, how do you think the woman with an issue of blood acted the rest of her life? What was done for her, no one else could do. Do you think there's anyone on the planet who could tell her she was a daughter of God after that? Once God has done what no one else could do, you can't help but exude his love because he now resides in you and you in him. It's love. And I know you know it, but society has beat us up. So welcome to camp meeting, Love 101. We have to learn how to be loved so that we can learn to love. Not as just individuals corporately, because I'm a movement by myself. Well, I'm about to quote a rap song. Here we go. I'm a movement by myself. I don't mind going places alone with God because God makes me more than enough. We talked about that yesterday. But do you understand together we are a force of nature? Together we can go to the every corner, nook and cranny of Arizona and cover this place in so much love, people will not know what to do except love and be loved. We can do it, but we've got to learn how to be loved ourselves so we can love others. Folks, without any of these things, and if you have a chance tonight, I want you to go back through the chapter, and every time you see love, I want you to put in God. Let me show you how this works. Though I speak with tongues of men and angels, but have not God, I have become sounding brass or clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and have, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but I have not God, I have nothing. You're just making a bunch of noise without God. I am enough through him. I am a soldier through him. I am alive through him. I am saved through him. My salvation is made complete through him. And I can challenge hell through him. I can go in and pull my family out. I can go in and save my loved ones. I can go in and preach and teach and change the world because of him. It's not me. You think Moses was going to go back to save the Israelites? He had given that life up. He was good on his own. But God said, take me with you. I'll go with you to Pharaoh. I got it. I'm going to show Pharaoh who the real God is. And Egypt tried to erase that from history. They got their butts whooped so bad. They don't want nobody to talk about it. Let God make you enough. Let him love you so that you can love others. Let's pray. Father in heaven, bless us, Lord. We have a great need, and that need goes so far beyond theology. That need so goes so far beyond doctrine. That need is so fundamental to the brokenness in us. We broke up with love. And because we've been beaten so badly, we no longer know how to be loved, let alone love someone else. We think we have an idea. We think we can express it. We think we can tell each other. We think we know how to behave like it. But without you, it ain't love. Father, we need you. Love on us today. Teach us how to be loved so that we can love. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.